Hi, my name's Mal. Welcome to another episode of Mini Model Makes. In today's episode, I'm going to do an unboxing of something I've been really looking forward to getting my hands on. And that is Warhammer Quest Cursed City. Ever since they started releasing pictures of the models for this, I've just been desperate to get my hands on it. I've just thought what an amazing box set, really, really want it and finally I've got it. Now I'm not a gaming shop, I'm not a, a guy with millions of subscribers so this is a good week after it's been released, it's the first time I could get my hands on this box. So I apologise it's not in advance but as I said I'm not a gaming shop and I'm not a, a massively trending YouTuber for Games Workshop to send it me early to, to influence people. So I just hope people out there, you've not seen it, not been able to get your hands on it yet and, and you still want to know what's inside the box. It's been really popular. It, it sort of sold out straight away and I was absolutely gutted I couldn't get the novel to go with it. But the limited edition books, the scalpers are just getting hold of them and I, I'm, there's no way I'm paying £100 on eBay for a £40 book, which, you know, it, it's it's disgraceful really that people are making a profit out of things like that, but uh, that's the way of the world. So anyway, a massive thank you to Lazy Dragon Games, which is the local gaming shop in Blackpool, and to Evie for putting this aside for me. So I didn't have to worry about trying to fight to get one before they sold out on the day. Massive thank you to them. As I say to everyone, always go to your local gaming store, support them, they'll support you back. Trust me. <laughs> and what's more, it's £125 from Games Workshop. Because I am a special subscriber to my local gaming shop, I got this for the princely sum of £106, which is amazing. If you live locally to Blackpool, that area, Lazy Dragon Gaming, they have a Patreon where you can support the shop and pay a certain amount each month and you get money off discounts and if you pay enough like I do, I get a free brush and four paints a month. It's well worth it on top of the discounts that you're getting if you're buying your toys there regularly. So big, big shout out. If you're nearby to them, please go and look them up. They're amazing. So without much further ado, let's get this box cracked open because I want to have a look inside and see how amazing it is. I'll get the overhead cam set up. See you soon. Here is Warhammer Quest Cursed City. Now, apologies, my overhead camera is as high up and as as panned out as I can get it to try and fit this absolutely massive box onto my desk and open it up so I, I can't fully zoom out for you sorry about that but that's it's just the sake of the box we're not going to see everything so here's the box not sure about the artwork it's okay it's it's in that grim dark Mordheim kind of style for those old gamers like me who remember that game from long ago and Let's get it open so it's heroic quests in the Doom City of Ulfen Khan. Desperate to get my hands on one of these as soon as Games Workshop announced it and started showing the models. The models are absolutely beautiful and I cannot wait to play this game with my family. My boys are going to absolutely adore it. So, that's the box set opened and we are confronted with Sprue after sprue after sprue after sprue. Oh, there's so many models in this. It is unbelievable. As I've said, I can only pan out so far. There's probably going to be a lot of to and fro in with the cameras on this. As I said, I'm just a guy doing his hobby. I'm, I've not got amazing cameras or anything. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I, I, I don't get any money for equipment, so I've got to do what I've got to do. Uh, just to open it up, there is a great big insert, which is not that amazing, really. It's just blood on a thing, so no real artwork. No artwork on the other side. Crying shame. I liked when they did the inserts and it had artwork on. I've got them hung up on the wall behind me, some of them. Now... 
pack of bases. Another pack of bases. We know where we're going with bases. We're not too bothered about that, are we, guys? So they can go straight into the lid. Warhammer Quest Curse City, the rule book. Gonna get my scalpel and very very carefully open some vein on that. Sorry, I think there's gonna be a bit of toing and froing in this video. So we have the rule book for Kerr City, introduction, the components. Really nice. Cards, all the other little bits and pieces that you get with a box set. And then you've got the hero models, the hostile models. Oh my god, that Varg skier is amazing. More hostile models. I'll keep this to one side as I go through the frames so I can accurately describe what is what. Then we've got tutorials, which is great. Getting ready to play. Uh, so that's all the rules. Ex more examples, an example of the playing area, which is really nice. Describing the turn phase, activation phase, heroes, loads of bits and pieces. Activating your hostile groups, because I gather you can play this without a, a game master or dungeon master as it were. You can just play against the, the enemy models and they move in a certain way. A bit like Silver Tower and... Um, the other one that they did as well, and then you've got Journey's End, which is the end of your missions. All your different journey types and bits and pieces and more rules there. And a handy reference on the back for everyone to go to, which is good. The next part one we've got are the War Scrolls. So this is for your use in Age of Sigmar. So you've got the Watch Captain, Clathis, Jelson, Darak, Brutog, Dagnai. There's Jelson, absolutely cool model. So yeah, all your hero characters. Glorio von Alten the Third. Octrin and Cleona. That artwork again. Radikar the Wolf, Tugilius the Chamberlain, Watch Captain Holgrim, Gorslav the Gravekeeper, Verkos Bloodborne, Kasagi Nightguard. So these go in your death armies. They've got Death Rattle, Dead Walkers, Soul Blight, all your keywords in here. Varg Skier. Zombies and Skeleton Warriors. And then some pitch battle profiles there for everything of the heroes as well. It's quite good. So you can fit them into your games of Age of Sigmar, which is nice. Then this is all the instructions, no glue required. Now we all know we're going to be gluing it, so. Yeah, that's not a selling point, Games Workshop. So you've got all these lovely, lovely frames and the instructions for Jelson, uh, Imelda, Lathis. So all your heroes going through there. Absolutely adore these models, they're amazing. That Fox gear, oh, what a beautiful model. Deadwalker Zombies, the Ulfen Watch, which are the Skeleton Warriors, Corpse Rats. And then your Bat Swarm and your uh, Gibbet. 
another bits and pieces there and then there's an errata here which is Dagnai Holdenstock you must have forgot about the dwarf <laughs> stuck him in at the end there next we have an envelope Ulfenkan Imperil envelope do not open until the final assault decapitation journey has been completed sorry folks I am not opening this it will remain sealed because I ain't spoiling my game just for you guys at home, guys and girls, sorry. And then there's the Cursed City Ulfenkarn in Peril quest book. So you've got a lot of the background to it there and where it is in the the world, Ulfenkarn near the Ossian Sea. Some nice storyline there and loads of fluff about Radikar the Wolf, Fergus the Bloodborne, Watch Captain Holgrim. Loads of bits and pieces for you to go through there, which is nice. The city itself. You've got some pen pieces on all the heroes. there which is good and then more on your missions and your maps and setups some scavenge journeys and random things more maps so these are all the different missions you can do deliverance decapitation then you've got crises more of that sort of stuff wow this is a massive generator number generator just page after page the fell guardian captain of the damned so these must all be for the specific lieutenants of Radikar the wolf shuffling horrors whispers in the dark family ties and the final assault itself a reference thing on the background so that's the quest book quite a hefty book that we've got a flyer advertising the book that you couldn't get hold of because it's been sold out and scalpers went to town on the limited edition don't get me started then loads of dice as well so we've got these white dice which have either a one diamond or two diamonds on them and not much else don't want to be rolling them for much these grey dice, diamonds are the same, they would be d8s d12s with more markers on and then one more d12 and a plethora of black and white D6. So 20 D6 in total. And then those specialist dice as well. Uh, next section we've got are these wonderful cards so to begin with there are these very small cards which I think are kind of the the like your initiative order cards your heroes have a certain token and then so do the baddies wherever those cards fit in is where they go what turn they are going in then we have some more now these are a bit more playing card size treasure cards crises so I gather you don't want to be getting one of those realm stone 
and then you've got your slightly bigger cards with traits on traits for the blade, the executioner and if we turn it over the stalwart and the lawmaster so I think these basically as your hero progresses they can progress down a certain path and pick up these skills depending on what you want to do with them so there's character progression there which is really nice another big pack of cards here which are weapons and other bits and pieces I'll be here all day if I start going through them so and then you've got these wonderful character cards so you've got Radakar the Wolf empowered and Radakar the Wolf now with these basically as far as I'm aware the game progresses in time so you start off in the daytime and the undead minions are weak or weaker as it gets towards night time they, they become empowered and, and more powerful so I gather if you meet Radakar and the sun's up he's on this side if it's night time it goes to this side and he becomes a lot and nastier he's got his own behaviours and things off there so they're good references for the models you're playing so you've got Radakar Gorslav Torgilius Watch Captain Holgrim The Varg Skier The Kasagi Night Guard Undead Ogre Zombie Guards Verkos Bloodborne Dead Walker Zombies Corpse Rats Bat Swarms The Ulfen Watch and then here we have our heroes as well. So you've got Octrin, uh, I don't know the difference between this. Might be as you get more powerful. Cleona Zeitengel, Lawmaster Human Priest. Ah uh, yes, it's when they're inspired, so they're inspired and then the the knot. Dagnai Holdenstock Carriage Wrong Glorio von Alten the Third Brutog Corpse Eater He's amazing. I'll use him as a man eater in my Ogor army as well, I think. Kulathis the Exile, who's at Sylvaneth. Jelson Darek, which is the amazing witch hunter style character. He just looks immense. And Captain Imelda Brazkov. And then you've got a card here for Ulfen Khan in Peril. So as far as I know, that's as the game progresses, the the as the city gets more and more in trouble, fear and influence, it can affect the game or end the game. There we go. So that's all the card stock there to get out. So in the actual box itself, what they've done, which is very nice of them, there's loads of little plastic zip seal bags to put all your cards and counters in. A lot of companies are starting to do that now, which is brilliant. Although I've actually said to uh, my local hobby store, If you can let us know what size sleeves I need for these cards, just tell me and I'll buy it. And we'll keep the cards nice and safe. Right, so here we have the tiles. I will cut these open and we'll go through them. The first thing that grasps me with these tiles is the amazing artwork on them they do look really good really good the effort that's gone into these is immense they want to come straight out of the backing card as soon as you lift them up so I'm gonna to have to try and be careful because I want to try and keep them as they are 
but as you can see from here, look like the throne room just looks immense. Really does the lighting effects on them. It, it's come on, hasn't it? Since Hero Quest, <laughs> it's come on so much. The other side, we've got nice ruined chambers outside and crates and things. A crypt in this corner. Uh, more sort of ruined crypt that's covered in caskets and tombs and things like that. Nice blood splattered everywhere. This this city really is in trouble. Turn it over, you've got sort of a mausoleum and overgrown areas. Yet more open caskets smashed up. All your little tokens are on the top as well. And then we've got some more rooms and corridors here. It's a nice L-shaped one. I love the, the flooring. I've got some Mechanicus scenery for 40k, which I took the time to paint up like that. Well, I never ever want to do it again. It does look so good on the terrain. More outdoor areas, cobbles and sewer hatches and things. Oh. I detect a theme, it's very, very, very undead. Just imagine all the vampires and skeletons crawling out of these. As soon as night time hits, you are in trouble. More. Uh, and then you've got all your other tokens and trackers and things. This is the thing I was talking about where it gets more towards night time. So as you progress through the day, the sun eventually sets and then you're in massive trouble because all the dead stuff is even more powerful. And then you've got the back of all those tokens there as well. So yeah, really nice, really good quality card stock. It's not cheap card. Which is good, quite nice, nice and thick. I'm trying to show you. You know, there's a, there's a good thickness to it. I'll quickly show you the back of the box while I've got it. You've got all the amazing models and guides and things. And then nice little old painted hench men and another, you know, these zombies and stuff. Reminds me that Hero Quest reminds me of being a young lad and opening my Hero Quest for the first time and being bowled over by the miniatures, uh, all painted up by Mike McVeigh, I think it was. See, it brings back memories. It takes me back to my childhood. Let's crack on with what we're really here for, which are these amazing, amazing miniatures. I'm going to try and bring this in a little bit. So here we have uh, some of the scenery. There. And one of the zombie ogre guards. And then the Varg skier. It's a sort of great big werewolf vampire looking thing. So these models, we've got these ogres and this fog skier are actually the massive. If you try and get painting up some Imperial Guardsmen for 40k, there's a Guardsman. You can just see the size that the zombie ogre is going to be compared to a human sized model. They're absolutely immense. Same with the Vargski, if that's his foot down there. You know, Guardsman's just not even getting up to waist height on him. It's amazing. Absolutely massive models. You've got the Grave Keeper there, because that's his spade. Now, from what I can gather, he just goes around and buries people alive. 
and yet you have to struggle to get your mates out before they die so that's amazing you've got the other zombie guard there as well really really lovely I say it all the time when I see, see Game Workshop models that they are absolutely gorgeous miniatures the sculpting quality is just out of this world so that's one frame this is the main man himself this is Radakar the wolf so he's in several pieces and it makes no rhyme nor reason so you've got his head part of his body and then his wolf's tail off his cloak I think there that's his actual body his cloak and then an arm and more of his shoulder, the wolf on his shoulder there with the, the scars going through it he's another stunning model really stunning, can't wait to paint him up um, in fact here is a thought should have done this sooner here's one of my ogres from my ogre army yeah he's comparable in size to the ogre not really much bigger he's, he's actually a lot slimmer I'll just go back to the uh, the guards themselves in the big coats they might stand just a tiny bit taller than an ogre themselves which is interesting these lighter ones are the heroes so here you've got your dwarf you've got Brutog Corpse Eater as well the ogre really really cool all the gubbins and gizmos for the dwarf and Brutog's got sort of his big spike mace and his punch dagger kind of thing the armor's really nice Head's really impressive too. So he's a hefty model in himself. So that's that one, some sort of weird spiked gun that the dwarf has. And then we have here our mages. It's actually, <laughs> there's that much crammed into these sprues it's so hard to concentrate on what is what you know they've packed it onto these models I think we've got the watch cap she yeah the watch captain the human prince the priestess is this Jelson as well I think yeah, they just <laughs> they're really weird he's got like his arm and then a low long attachment and then it goes to his foot. <laughs> How these models fit together is beyond me. You've got the Sylvaneth Elf there as well. Yeah, it's just amazing how these model how you assemble these models. Like, look, there's Jelson's. You've got his head and his hat. Then a load of stakes, then one leg and, and part of his belt across. That's it's bonkers how these fit together really clever of them how they do it but there are heroes as you can see they're, they're absolutely stunning you know go online look at the pictures they're just beautiful beautiful models next frame now we've got loads of rats and the Ulfen Khan watch so these are skeleton now these skeleton models are some of the best undead models I have seen ever. Loads of detail, they're just going to be amazing to paint up, a real joy to paint. 
and then you've got these weird, wonderful and wacky zombies with bits of wooden post stuck to them and all sorts of things, like they've just crawled off a, a gibbet or something and got down and started attacking people at will. Loads more rats and bats and things on there. Let's bring the model up a bit nearer. You can see the detail on the shield. Absolutely stunning. They, they really have outdone themselves. Recently with Games Workshop I've not wanted to buy anything for a while. I've just been like, nah, I'll save me money. I'll paint up what I've got. But the quality on these just made me go, I don't care about the price. <laughs> I want to buy Warhammer Quest and I need it in my life. Absolutely beautiful. Another frame. More skeletons and zombies and stuff on there. Looks very similar. They might actually be two similar frames. Let me just double check. He said too early. They are the same frames. So you get two frames, same models. But that's all the swarm kind of stuff and minions. Not bothered too much about that. I said, absolutely stunning. Can't wait to get these assembled up and playing some games, maybe painting them, doing some videos. So that is it for our Warhammer Quest Cursed City. I'm going to pop that on there now as my little mat. Yeah, anyone out there looking to sponsor a guy in a man cave with, uh, you know, only a few subscribers. I won't mind a nice mat. You can stick your name on it and, and I'll, you can sponsor me that way. Shameless plug. But no one's watching anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so <laughs> that's it. Warhammer Quest Curse City. Really recommend you go out there and buy that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll wrap this video up. So uh, see you shortly. So that was the opening of the Warhammer Quest Curse City box set. I hope you like that box set and what's inside it as much as I do. To everyone who's got a copy, you absolute lucky ducks for getting hold of one. For those of you who are still waiting and couldn't get hold of one, it's, it's well worth it. I'm sorry you have to wait, but they are printing out more. Don't go to the scalpers. Just be patient, wait a little bit longer and there'll be more of them coming out. Games Workshop have already said that they're gonna they're gonna keep printing this for a while it's not gonna be too limited edition can't wait to get playing this it's gonna be amazing can't wait to paint up some models and I might do some painting videos if I've got time but I'm just so rammed with work at the moment and doing stuff for university and things I don't know we'll we'll see I've got a massive backlog of stuff I need to paint already and I just want to get this stuff painted so I can play games with it It'd be amazing and get my uh, family playing it too so not much more to say now except for please like subscribe and share i'm a, a bloke doing his hobby in his little man cave in his house so every like subscribe every constructive comment nice comment makes my day makes these videos worthwhile makes me keep doing what i want to do and it helps me so much I'm not asking people for money. I'm not asking people to prop me up with financial things or going on Patreon or anything like that. I'm just asking for a 20 seconds of your time and a, a click or a like or a hello. Be amazing to hear from people and hear where you are in the world and, and interact and all do our hobby together during lockdown. Still lockdown, we're getting out the other side of it, which is great. So please stay safe out there. And hopefully I'll see you soon. As I've said, I keep saying it, please like, subscribe and share. Come and see me on my Mini Model Makes Facebook page. And I'm hoping to do some more videos soon. Bye for now.